That will take us to um, Matthew 25. <clears throat> Matthew 25, and we'll start at verse 1 if you'd like to turn. I'm getting the scary stuff out of the way right away. Okay, guys? <laughs> scary. <laughs> It's interesting, though, because when you start thinking about it like this, because I'm, I'm going to reread what happens, the results of not being ready. But if you really read these passages, God doesn't hardly give you an inch. You know what I'm saying? Like, are you ready? Are you going to be ready for my coming? Are you on fire and ablaze in the, in the spirit? If you aren't, then sorry, you know? Like, it's interesting when you start reading it that there is a certain level that we need to carry ourselves at that, so that we are ready. He said, keep your loins girded and your lights lamped. Your lights, whatever, let me look it up. One more time, let's read it. And your lights burning. <laughs> so that is important. Okay, so we'll go to Matthew 25. Then shall the kingdom of heaven be likened unto ten virgins, which took their lamps and went forth to meet the bridegroom. And five of them were wise and five of them were foolish. That'd be sad, right? The only time you're like rec recorded in the Bible is that <laughs> you were foolish. That's it. <laughs> I, know it's a, I know it's a parable, but that'd be sad. <laughs> I always think about that, like the one person, like the... the rich and the rich guy and he was like sell all you have and he was like no and walked away and like that was the only time he was recorded in the bible was that like he failed the test oh i don't want to be that person okay like unto ten virgins and five of them were wise and five of them were foolish and they that were foolish took their lamps and took no oil with them but the wise took oil in their vessels with their lamps. When the bridegroom tarried, they all slumbered and slept. And at midnight there was a cry made, Behold, the bridegroom come, go ye out to meet him. Then all the virgins arose and trimmed their lamps. And the foolish said unto the wise, Give of us your oil, for our lamps have gone out. But the wise answered, saying, Not so, lest there be not enough for us and you. But go ye rather to them that sell and buy for yourselves. And while they went to buy, the bridegroom came. And they that were ready went in with them to the marriage, and the door was shut. Afterward came also the ten virgins, saying, Lord, Lord, open unto us. But he answered and said, Verily I say unto you, I know you not. Watch therefore that ye know neither the day nor the hour wherein the Son of Man cometh. Which I know that verse can always, that passage can always sound scary because, you know, they were left, they were left out, you know. But that, the, in that passage, oil is referred to um, in the Bible we know as like the Holy Spirit, right? And so that was, they were full, right? Their lamps were full. They were full. Their lamps were burning. Their lights were burning. They had oil in them. It was full. And they, the other ones took no oil. They were, they were dry. They were empty. And when the Holy Ghost, when the, when the Lord came to take them up, they were empty. And when they went to go get more, they were left. And that's kind of scary, right? Not scary. I keep saying scary. But that's just interesting that that was a parable that the Lord gave to us, right? So how do we check our readiness? We check our readiness by, are we being worldly? Are we allowing the cares of this world to consume us? And are we full? We need to make sure that we are full of the oil of the Holy Ghost, right? Full of the Holy Ghost at all times. That's what uh, Stephen was. He was full of the Spirit, right? And of power. And he, and he was able to perform many miracles. They specified that of Stephen. He was full of the Spirit. That was a specification made to Stephen, which is interesting. And the fact that he, that he was able to be such a testimony in, in his life, in ministry, you know? So, all that, those are kind of the, how, those are kind of the, like, are we ready for the coming of the Lord, right? The results of not being ready. <laughs> we know that Luke, we, I can read it one more time, but it said that the man that was not ready, and he shall come, and uh, it says, but if my servant say in his heart, the lo my Lord is delayed, 
And when the Lord of that servant will come in on a day when he looketh not for him, and at the hour when he is not aware, he will cut him asunder and will appoint his portion with the unbelievers or with the unfaithful. Isn't that crazy? So that is a result of not being full and not being ready. Um, and then the virgins were left out, the five virgins who were foolish, foolish and did not stay full. So those are, the, those are the spooky things. We're over it now. <laughs> We're over it now, guys. You made it. <laughs> We're done. So my, the, I, I will again bring up my uh, name for my sermon is Wake Up. So there is coming, we know that the rapture is coming soon, right? We all, I mean, we all know that. We are living in the end times, all the prophecies that have been fulfilled. So that is why I was feeling it so much today as I was reading these. There is a longing of, of God to get us ready. We need to be ready to meet the bridegroom of Christ, right? We need to be ready for his coming. I'm not going to be like a servant who turned away. And, and was left and was moved with the lot of the unfaithful, who was moved with the lot of the unbelievers. Because at that point, what is, what is the life of a Christian worth? You know what I'm saying? If we aren't living full, if we aren't living ready, and we miss it, what, what was it for, you know? And it is so important to live ready more than ever these end times. So how do we live ready, guys? It's told. We are so excited about this. Yay! <laughs> How to be ready. Everybody, turn to Romans 12. Romans 12, the whole passage, is our answer. Don't you love when there's, that can sound spooky, there can be a lot of things that God is like, I am pleading with you. He said, oh, how I wish that the fire were already kindled. Because he wants us. He says, oh, I'll read it one more time because I thought that was so powerful. He said, um, he said, I have come to set the earth in fire, and how I wish it were already ablaze with fiery passion for God. That is, that is so powerful. He is almost, he is wishing, he is lamenting that this, that we're on fire when he comes back, right? So how are we going to do that? How are we going to be on fire? Romans 12, is everybody there? I appeal to you, I'm reading it in the Amplified, but we know I will turn actually in my King James Version for some of it. Um, Romans 12, it says, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. That's rule number one, right? Present your bodies a living sacrifice. So we know that that means, uh, what is that called, Mom? When you, uh, when you uh, again, give yourself to God, what is that? Consecration. I figured it out. <laughs> It's consecration, thus that is step one, is consecration, right? I commit myself to you. Mom, mom preached on that just the other day. I commit myself to you. Let's read the verse quick. Lord, I present myself to you. May your will be done in my life. May I never forget that I have surrendered all I am to you. I commit myself to be the one whom you can use, consecrated and separated unto your purposes. I will pay the price by denying the flesh. If you call me in the nighttime, I will get on my knees and pray. If I am never seen of men, and if I always work behind the scenes, still I will be faithful. I lay aside all personal ambition, and I'll be the one who walks in the Spirit and in your perfect will. In Jesus' name your will be wrought in my heart in my life and in my ministry Amen. prayer of consecration is step one of how to be ready right so step one then it says for i say through the grace given unto me to every man that is among you not to think of himself more highly than he ought but to think soberly according as god has dealt to every man the measure of faith so that means don't be arrogant right Stay humble. And what I talked about last time with grace is 
Humility is a necessity to grace. How do we operate in the grace of our life? By staying humble. Everything we do is back to God. Everything we do glorifies God. We don't take credit for anything we've done, right? For as we have many members in one body, and all members have not the same office, so we being many are in one body of Christ, and every one members of another, having different gifts, and I can skip that part, because we know it talks about having gifts, if you have a gift of prophecy to prophesy, and all, you know, those different gifts of the, of the body, which are uh, very important, but not, I'm not going to read them all. <laughs> So um, then it says, Be kindly affectioned one to another with brotherly love, in honor, preferring one another. So step one, consecration, right? Step two, we've got um, humility. we got to be humble. Step three, loving one another, not allowing yourself to get offended. In brotherly love, giving precedence and showing honor to one another. It's pretty hard to be in offense with someone when you, when you prefer them and everything, right? When you honor them no matter what. It's pretty hard to hold a grudge. It's, it's pretty easy to let a grudge go when you prefer someone. Hmm? So that is step three, is love the brethren. Not slothful in business, fervent in spirit, serving the Lord. And that one is Reverend Joel Siegel's favorite verse, and it's my favorite verse now too, guys. <laughs> uh, it's verse 11 in the Amplified. Never lag in zeal and in earnest endeavor, but be aglow and burning with the Spirit. Remember, we're supposed to keep our lights burning, right? We have to keep ourselves zealous, on fire for God, waiting for the coming of the Lord. So this is how we do it. Isn't that amazing that, that there is literally a verse that says how to do it? It says, never lag in zeal or in earnest endeavor, but be aglow and burning with the Spirit, serving the Lord. In the Passion Translation, it says, be enthusiastic to serve the Lord, keeping your passion towards Him boiling hot. Isn't that amazing? Isn't that amazing? How to be on fire. Keep your passion towards him burning hot. Radiate with the glow of the Holy Ghost and let him fill you with excitement as you serve him. Amen. Amen. I'm excited about that. I'm going to read it one more time and everybody say amen after because I know you're excited. Okay, ready? And be enthusiastic to serve the Lord, keeping your passion towards him boiling hot. Radiate with the glow of the Holy Ghost and let him fill you with excitement as you serve him. Hallelujah. That's exciting, right? We want to be a church without spot and without stain and without blemish, right? We want to be a church ready. We want to be a church ready for the Lord. We want to be ready for his coming. I don't want to, I don't want to have him come. I don't want to hear the trumpets and I don't want him to say, I'm sorry, you didn't have oil in your lamps. I'm sorry, you were fighting. I'm sorry, you were carried, you carried the cares of this world. I'm sorry, right? We can't, I don't want to be that person. I want to live a life on fire. I want to live my life zealous and earnest for the Lord so that he can come down and grab me up. I'm going to go up faster than all y'all. <laughs> Just joking. And he can say, well done, right? I want well done. I don't want half done. I don't want, mm, well, you did okay. I don't know. You did your best. <laughs> Will and I watched a video <laughs> And he, it was this old man, and they were doing like an 80s, like, it was not, looked like dad's, like, you, like uh, youth videos that he used to make. And so he was like, and now a word from our sponsor. And this really old man comes, and he goes, well, if we did, he said, well, we did our best, but if we had prepared, we could have done better. <laughs> <laughs> I said, I don't want to be that. I want to be prepared, right? <laughs> we had been prepared. We could have done better. <laughs> no, that is what this sermon is here for, right? I want us to be prepared for the coming of the Lord, which is soon. No man knows, but I know it's soon. <laughs> In fact, you, it doesn't matter if it's soon or not. You need to live like it's today. You need to live every day on fire for the Holy Ghost. We need to keep our loins girded about and our lights burning, right? 
Hallelujah. So let's keep going. Verse 12 says, Rejoice and exult in hope. Be steadfast and patient in suffering. Be constant in prayer. Those are a lot right there. So we, we have so far consecration, humility, right? We have being uh, brotherly love, being a, lo what, a friend of the brother. <laughs> that sounds kind of weird. It sounds like a slogan. What would be a better way to say it? Um, brotherly love. There we go. A glow and burning with the Holy Ghost, right? <clears throat> We are hopeful, we are patient, we are constant in prayer. These are guidelines to how to live full. These are guidelines to how to be ready, right? <clears throat> distributing to the necessity of the saints. Uh, it says, um, distributing to the necessity of the saints given to hospitality. Bless them which persecute you. Bless them and curse not. Which, this is interesting because if you, li if you look back, it's talking about we are all members of the same body. We are all members one of another. Have brotherly affection. Rejoice or bless them that persecute you. There are so many times that he keeps coming back to love of the brethren, right? He keeps coming back to offense and not taking it. He keeps coming back to blessing people, not holding grudges. He keeps coming back to honoring people, giving preference, right? So obviously that is something that we as humans can struggle with. And he just keeps burning it into our brains, right? So that is something, again, that's what the first thing was, readiness checker, are we ready? And that was, are we holding offense, right? <clears throat> so it says, rejoice with them that do rejoice and weep with them that weep. Be of the same mind one towards another. Mind not high things, but condescend to men of low estate. Be not wise in your own conceits. Which is, again, if you read in the Amplified, live in harmony with one another. Do not be haughty, snobbish, high-minded, exclusive. Which is, we're back to, the part two is humility, right? He keeps just coming back to some of the same points. It's obvious that we need to remember them, huh? Or that we can easily slip into them. So do not be snobbish, high-minded, or ex uh, exclusive, but readily adjust, adjust yourselves to people and things and give yourselves to humble tasks. Never overestimate yourself or be wise in your own conceits. Mm. I think he's also just in the natural... He's helping us, because have y'all ever been in a situation where you overestimated yourself? <laughs> that is embarrassing. <laughs> oh, man, I hate that. I'm like, oh, yeah, I can do it. And then about 30 minutes later, I had that at the shop. I'm in tears. I'm like, I can't do it. <laughs> I can't. <laughs> I overestimated myself. The Holy Ghost is trying to help us spiritually and save us from embarrassment naturally, right? He's trying to help us, y'all. It's easy to listen. You look back on life and you're like, man, I would have just, you know, listened to the Holy Ghost on those situations. I could have saved myself a lot of grief. <laughs> it's, it's interesting, huh? Yeah. Repay no evil for evil. This is verse 17. Repay no one evil for evil, but take thought for what is honest and proper and noble, aiming to be above reproach in the sight of everyone. If possible, as far as it depends on you, live at peace with everyone. He is just driving that home. You need, it is so vital to living ready for the coming of the Lord that you live at peace with everyone. It is so vital that you refuse to pick up offenses. It is so important. He said it multiple times here. So we have to check ourselves. We have to check our readiness. We need to make sure that we are ready for the coming of the Lord, which is so exciting because this can sound, it can sound like there's a lot of rules and stuff, right? But it's not. It is an exciting time we're living in. This is, you know, there's revival coming or I, I want to say revival's here, right? In Jesus' name, revival's here, revival's now. We get to be a part of the greatest move of God in our lifetime. We get to be a part of this end time revival, this end time harvest of souls. It is not a hard sacrifice to fight, to not fight with someone, right? It is not a hard sacrifice to not hold grudges. It's not a hard sacrifice to be humble. It's, it's not hard when you think of the joy and getting to run that race. He said, Jesus said, for the joy, he looked ahead. 
right? And he ran his race. He looked ahead in joy. He, he saw the cross. He knew what was coming, and yet he looked ahead in excitement for what was coming because he saw us right now. He saw this time that we're in right now. He saw the people of Elk River getting saved, right? He saw the church filling up. He saw people's lives turned around. He saw dead people raised up, right? He saw healings in this church. He saw that and he decided that it was worth it, right? So I think it's time for us to decide that it's worth it to get with the program, right? I'm preaching to myself because I need to get with the program. <laughs> I'm getting with the program. <laughs> okay. We're going to keep going. <laughs> so it says, Beloveds, never avenge yourself, but leave the way open for God's wrath. For it is written, Vengeance is mine. I will repay, says the Lord. And that's the same with grace. Remember, it says, and, and God will vindicate you. That was what grace does for us. And that is the same if we live full. He is the vindicative one. He will, he will avenge us, right? Those things that have been done against us or that you feel is hurt. Why would you hold it? And why would you carry it? And why would you hurt about it and cry about it? Because God knows. God knows how you feel. God understands that those things were wrong. But why would you hold on to them when God, because when you're holding on, God can't do it. He is, I'm not going to say it, but he can do vengeance a lot better than y'all. <laughs> if you've read the Old Testament, <laughs> he is pretty good at that. <laughs> Sometimes you read the Old Testament, I'm like, ooh, <laughs> I understand the fear of the Lord. <laughs> I'm a little scared. No. <laughs> so vengeance is mine. We need to release those things that we've been holding on to, right? Everybody repeat after me. I release those things that I've been holding on to and I give them to you and I thank you God that vengeance is yours and you are on my case and I forgive those who have wronged me and I bless them in Jesus name and if you meant it with your heart then good <laughs> Anyways, then, great. <laughs> so then it says, <clears throat> verse 20, But if your enemy is hungry, feed him. And if he is thirsty, give him drink. For by doing so, you will heap burning coals upon his head. And I love this one. Verse 21, this really, I don't know why, but this one is so good. Do not let yourself be overcome by evil. But in the Amplified, it says, But overcome and master evil with good. We become masters of the evil. It's not allowed to master us anymore. We become a master of those things that have been keeping us in bondage. If you, if you, everybody has their own struggles that the Lord, between them and the Lord, right? That we're all working on. But you, there is, there is a good message today, ready? You can master those things that have been keeping you hostage. You can master those things. You can master those things that have been holding you back in your life, right? And there's no condemnation. All you got to do is take your seat of authority and you immediately are placed in that seat. And you can master those things in your life, right? Amen. It's so exciting. Amen. 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 So, <clears throat> those are the rules. Those are the steps of how to live full. And I think that that is so powerful that God gave us. It literally says... Be never lag in zeal and an earnest endeavor, but be aglow and burning with the Spirit, serving the Lord. That literally is keeping our lights burning, keeping our oil full for the coming of the Lord. We are waiting for the coming of the Lord. He says so that when he comes in the second or third hour that we will be ready. You know, we need to live our life full. So the, the fourth point that I, I know that I'm kind of throwing a lot at you, but let's recap quick. Ready? Check your readiness. How, are, how do we check our readiness? A, are we worldly? Are we uh, fighting with one another? Are there divisions among us? Are we giving in to the lust of the flesh, right? B, the cares of this world. Are we holding on to worry? Are we letting the cares of this world consume us? 
See, are we full? Just like the virgins, we want to make sure our oil lamps are full. We want to make sure that we are full of the Spirit at all times. My cup runneth over, right? That is, you need to be full to overflowing with the Spirit. That is fullness. So those are, check your readiness. Two, results of not being ready. Being counted unfaithful. Being put in the lot of the unbelievers. And being left out like the five foolish virgins. So how do, we, how do we be ready? That's all of Romans 12. We know consecration. We know being humble, right? We know having brotherly love, living peaceable with everybody, right? Being aglow and burning with the Holy Ghost, being enthusiastic to serve the Lord, keeping your passion towards him boiling hot, radiating with the glow of the Holy Ghost, could you imagine? That is what happened to Moses, is it not? He came down from the mountain so full of God that it was shining from his face. It was shining from his fingers. They had to put a, they had to put a, a cape over his face because they couldn't stand to look at the glory of God. That is what we need to live like. That is where we need to be. And he was in the Old Testament. We have the Holy Ghost inside of us now. We don't have to climb a mountain to see God. Not only the backside of God. <laughs> we get to see, we get to see the Lord, you know? We get to have the Holy Ghost inside of us. It is so easy. It's easy, guys. All these verses can be, I mean, a lot of these verses can be condensed to what Jesus said. This new commandment I have unto you, love, you know what I'm saying? Love one another. That's the new commandment. He's saying all these are fulfilled in this one. It's so easy to live full. It is. It's so easy to live full. We love the brethren. We live full. We keep ourselves. It, calls, it says stir yourself up in your most holy faith. That is how you keep your oil, go that's how you keep your oil full, by stirring yourselves up. How do we stir ourselves up? In the word, in prayer, in worship. We just, we're keeping that connection with God open. We are keeping it open. There's never a point in our lives that we should ever have it blocked off. Faith is a pipeline. The relationship of God is a pipeline. We keep open communications at all times. You know, when you're at, when you're at the, I, I do this all the time on accident, but not on accident. I'll be, if something happens, like, the the late the cashier is like <clears throat> oh you got a discount i'll be like oh thank the lord <laughs> praise god and then i'll be like oh sorry <laughs> I, but not sorry because you there is always a fellowship there's always a union there's always a communication with god right okay so my fourth point is jesus is pleading with us to be ready and we'll go i'll read again luke 12 he says, I have come to set fire, uh, to set the earth on fire, and how I wish that it were already ablaze, ablaze with the fiery passion for God. That's pretty, I, I, that is so powerful to me. That is Jesus himself. Oh, how I wish that the earth was already ablaze with passion for God. Oh, how I wish. <clears throat> he doesn't have to wish. We can do it. <clears throat> this is Revelations. This is Jesus talking about the church and pleading with us to be ready. And I thought this was so powerful. So if you want to turn to Revelations 3, I'm going to be reading it in the New International Virgin, Version. But, uh, <laughs> Virgin. <laughs> Stop, Will. <laughs> the New International Version. So Revelations 3. <laughs> Amen. Is everybody ready? Yes. So I, I thought that this was so powerful. There are, if you read the chapter before this, uh, Revelations 2, and you read Revelations 3, these two passages, it's talking about churches, last day churches in the Bible. And uh, we know the one, and he said, this one thing I hold against you, that you lost your first love, right? He said, you were spending all your time toiling, and, and, and making headway for the word, but you forgot that it comes from a place of love and that it comes from a place of fellowship. So if you ever have time to read those two chapters, it is so powerful because 
If you think about it, Revelations was John looking into the future, right? And writing down what he saw. And then it was printed for us to read. So it is literally like a prophecy. We get a glimpse of what these end day churches look like. And it's so weird when you start reading them, I'll be like, oh, that's why I'm reading these two because it is a glimpse of what our churches look like today. And it's crazy, like they were warning us You know, John, the Holy Ghost was warning us all those decades ago, all those centuries ago, he was trying to get us ready. And I think that's why it was so strong on me today. Just we we need to be ready. We need to wake up. We need to be ready for the coming of the Lord because you can always say, you can always say, oh, we're getting, we're in revival. We're in revival. Yay. Amen. We're the last generation, right? And you can always say that. But then when you, when you don't live like it, then you're not, right? Honestly, if you're thinking about it, if you don't live like it's the last generation, then it's just like what he said, then you're going to be counted with the unfaithful. We need to live like it is the last day on earth. We need to live with the expectancy of the coming of the Lord, which is so exciting. That's an exciting way to live. It is so exciting. No man knows. Could be tomorrow. I'll see you there. Um, Okay, so, Revelations 3, we'll start verse 1. It says, To the angel, I'm again reading New International Version, To the angel of the church in Sardis writes, These are the words of him who holds the seven spirits of God and the seven stars. I know your deeds. You had a reputation of being alive, but you are dead. Wake up! Strengthen that which remains and is about to die, for I have found your deeds unfinished in the sight of my God. Remember, therefore, what you have received and what you have heard, and you hold it fast and repent. But if you do not wake up, I will come like a thief, and you will not know what time I will come for you. Whoa. Whoa. Isn't that amazing? Remember those things that we have seen and heard. He is, that is the Holy Ghost. It, mine has exclamation points. Wake up, it says, to the, la, to the end day church. Why would he be telling us to wake up if we were already awake, right? There's something wrong. We're asleep, right? The, he says, I know your deeds. You had a reputation of being alive, but you are now dead. Wake up, strengthen that which remains and is about to die, for I have found your deeds unfinished in the sight of my God. Do you think this church is finished? No. I can answer no, right? Do you think we have more to do? Do you think Elk River has people who need to be saved? Do you think Elk River has people who need to be healed? Do you think people in Elk River need their lives turned around? Do you think there are people in Elk River who need a miraculous experience with God? We take for granted that every Sunday we can come here. I'm crying. (laughs) Wow. It's so good. Like, we... We take for granted that every Sunday we can come here and have an experience with the Holy Ghost where he comes down and he, he's with us in the room and he communes with us and he has fellowship with us in the music, in the service, in the after service, people getting laid hands on. We take it for granted, right? We don't realize that there are people out there who have never once felt the power of the Holy Ghost. They have never felt that love that you feel, right? They've never felt that. And why are we stuck in the church with divisions? Why are we stuck holding on to the cares of this world? Why are we stuck being consumed with the natural when there is so much more in the supernatural for this church to get into? There's so much more. There's a plan. This is the angel talking to the church, and he said, "There." He said, strengthen, for I have found your deeds unfinished. There are things that are not finished in the spirit, right? For, ev- for everybody, not just for this church, for other churches as well, right? 
there, we are not finished with what we have to do. We are not finished. It is so important that this message, that we take it, that we live it. We can't just be okay with hearing it and then go back and just live the same old way that we lived. Thank you. <laughs> I'm done crying now. <laughs> Ugh. I was reading this this afternoon, and I kept like telling my mom, I was like, Mom, listen to this, listen to this. And then she started, she had to go somewhere. So I called her like three or four times. I'm serious. I'm, Mom, listen to this. <laughs> this is an insider scoop to what the end day churches are like. And he has looked, John, the Holy Ghost showed John a picture of the future because he knew what our end day churches would look like. And he gave us a message. He said, wake up. It's time to wake up. You know, and it's, that's like what, um, who was it that said that the Western church is like a sleeping giant, that we don't even understand the power that we have. The Western church, right? We are living in such a wonderful country that we can have worship anytime we want. And it is such a giant, a giant thing in the spirit. We could be so giant in the spirit, but because we have allowed ourselves to be lulled to sleep, we are not doing what we should in the spirit, right? We are not living a glow. So anyways, we'll keep reading. <laughs> this is, we'll keep reading in Revelations. He says, yet you have a few people in Sardis who have not soiled their clothes, and they will walk with me dressed in white, for they are worthy. And the one who is victorious will, like them, be dressed in white. I will never blot out the name of that person from the book of life, but will acknowledge that name before my Father and his angels. And whoever has ears, let them hear what the Spirit of God is saying to the churches. Isn't that amazing? We want a church of all those few. We want a church of the few, right? We don't want to be a church of the only one out of six is going to be someone who's worthy. We want to be a church of the ones. Every single person is walking worthy. When, why, would we take, why would we take this amazing forewarning and waste it, right? We have the opportunity to grow. We have the opportunity to be ready for the coming of the Lord. Why would we waste it? So then that was uh, verse 6, and then I'm going to skip down, still Revelations 3, but to verse 14. This is to the church of Laodicea. It says, to the angels of the church of Laodicea writes, these are the words of the Amen, the faithful and true witness, the ruler of God's creation. I know your deeds, that you are neither hot nor cold. I wish you were either one or the other, so, because you are lukewarm, neither hot nor cold, I am about to spit you out of my mouth. He said, I'm about. <laughs> he said, I'm this close. <laughs> he's, like a, he's like an annoyed parent. He said, yeah, you got to the count of three to stop being lukewarm. I'm this close to whooping you. Anyways, um, <laughs> he said, I am about to spit you out of my mouth. You say, I am rich. I have acquired wealth, and I do not need a thing. What is that? That's the lust of the world. That's pride. Those are the things that are what we need to look out for, right? He said, this is embarrassing for them. Again, this is overestimating themselves. He said, but you do not realize that you are wretched, pitiful, poor, blind, and naked. <laughs> he hit every single point. <laughs> He didn't miss one. <laughs> Do not get in a roast battle with God. <laughs> he will outroast you. <laughs> he knows you too well. <laughs> he said, I counsel you to buy from me gold refined in the fire so that you can become truly rich and white clothes to wear so that you can cover your shameful nakedness and salve to put on your eyes so that you might truly see. Those whom I love, I rebuke and discipline, so be earnest and repent. The King James Version says, be zealous and repent. Isn't that interesting? He's, he's telling us, you're lukewarm. It's time to be zealous. It's time to start to be a, a, a glow and burning. So he says, be zealous and repent. Here I am. I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice, if anyone, he is literally asking, 
anyone, anyone, will anyone open the door, then I will come in and eat with that person and they with me. To the one who is victorious, I will give the right to sit with me on my throne, just as I was victorious and I sat with my father on his throne. Whoever has ears, let them hear what the Spirit is saying to the churches. Isn't that powerful? Do we have ears to hear? The Holy Ghost is, is crying out. He is trying to say what needs to be said to the churches, to our churches, right? He is begging us to listen. He's saying, if anyone hears, right? So we are the ones that are hearing this message, right? We are the ones that are hearing the call of God for the churches. We are the ones who will answer that call because it says, we have, I have seen that your deeds are unfinished. We are unfinished with what we have to do on this earth, right? We're unfinished with what we have to do in this city, in this state, right? With the way things are going, just, just one church could change the tra trajectory of Minnesota. Just one church. It would be easy. But it, all it takes is for us to deny the flesh. All it takes is for us to refuse. From this moment forward, I refuse to live a life less than full. I refuse to live a life less than a glow and burning in the spirit. I refuse to take up divisions, right? That's all it takes for us. And we can live we can live ready. We can have our loins girded about and our lights burning so that when our Lord comes he, and he returns, then we will be blessed and we will be ready. So there you go. I thank you, God. <sighs> thank you, Jesus. I'm going to pray real quick and then I'll close. So I thank you, God, for this church. I thank you, God, for this service. I thank you, God, for these people. I thank you, Father, that you are not finished. You are not finished, and we are not finished. I thank you, Father, for the plan. I thank you, Father, for what's next in this church. Like, like they said, it shall be accomplished. We wake up in Jesus' name. Now's the time we hear the call, and I thank you, Father, that we are waking up. I thank you, Father, that we are refusing right here. We are stopping right here and refusing to allow the cares of this world and the lust of this flesh to keep us from the plan you have. I thank Thank you, Father, that we are not lukewarm, that we are hot. We are aglow and burning with the Spirit. I thank you, Father, for the revival. I thank you, God, for the plan that you have for this church and this city, and it shall be accomplished. I thank you, God, that no weapon formed against that plan shall prosper. I thank you, God, that everything shall come to completion like you have promised us in your word. I thank you, Father, for your goodness and your mercy. I thank you, Father, for Elk River. I I thank you, Father, for Minnesota. I thank you, Father, that there, there is a plan that you have for it. And I thank you, Father, that you can get nothing finished without people, without our cooperation. So this is us right now as a church. We will cooperate. We will cooperate. We will be the ones that you can use. We will deny the flesh. We will take up our cross and we will continue to, to deny the flesh and follow you. I thank you, Father, that we will continue to live full of the Spirit. I thank you, Father, that we will stir ourselves up daily so that we will have no strength struggle when you come to get us that we can be a church ready we can be a bridegroom re a bride ready for its bridegroom i thank you father that we will be the ones who can f who can fulfill the plan for this city i thank you god for the people in this city i thank you jesus i thank you father that you have placed us here in this time i thank you father I thank you, Father, that we are the standard against the flood in Minnesota. I thank you, Father, that when the devil comes in like a flood, we will raise up a standard. I thank you, God, that we are the standard. You have placed us here on purpose. And I thank you, Father, I speak to those strongholds in Minnesota, and I command them to be broken. I command them to be taken down in the name of Jesus. There is no weapon on earth formed against us that shall prosper, and Minnesota that shall prosper. I thank you, Father, that the plan of God for Minnesota shall be accomplished. There is nothing you can do, devil. Ha, ha, ha. We already woke up. We've already woken up. We've already woken up. We've already woken up. 
We've already seen, we've already seen, and we will already know. We thank you, God. We already know, and we already have revelation, and we know that this shall be accomplished, and we take a stand, and we thank you, God. We thank you, Jesus. We thank you, Jesus. Oh, the plan is so good. Oh, it's so good. Oh, it's so good. Oh, how good and magnificent the plan is. How wonderful are your works. I thank you, Jesus. I thank you, God, for these people. I thank you, Father, that there are people that are meant for this church. Every single seat, there are people meant for this church, and there are people in this church that are supposed to be in this church. And I thank you, God, that they get a divine revelation, that their eyes of their understanding are opened, that they might know what is the hope of your call. I thank you, Father, for them, the hope of the call for them, so that they don't have any worry about what's next. I thank you, Father. I thank you, Father, for the goodness, the richness, the magnificence of the future that we have. I thank you, Father, that we can run the race that we have set before us, that looking ahead in joy, because, oh, it's so beautiful. Oh, it's so joyous. Oh, there's no stress. There's no sorrow. There's no worry with it. We thank you, Father, that everything that has come against us, that we have been able to, uh, to succeed and that there is more in store for us because of our faithfulness in continuing. I thank you, Father, for the continuation of the plan. I thank you, Father. I thank you, Jesus. There is more in store. I thank you, God. There is more in store. You are not finished with us. Our deeds have been unfinished in the sight of my God. So I thank you, Father, that we will be the ones to finish those things that you have called for us. I thank you, Father, that when you come, we will be ready and we will have souls and that the harvest will be reaped and we won't have to look back and hear the cries of people who have said, the harvest is done and we have not been saved. And we have not been saved. So I thank you that we don't have to be the ones to hear that, that we can make a stand right now that we can, we can reap those souls. So I call in those souls in Elk River. And I thank you, Father. We call those souls in Elk River. We call them forth. I thank you, Jesus. Those souls, those people who have a longing for you, I thank you, Father, that you will show them your goodness, that you will show them your goodness. I thank you, Jesus. Amen. Thank you, guys, for allowing me to minister. Amen.